So um, before the Occupy movement in the United States, there were a lot of other movements that were faced, such as the uh, anti-war movement, which was the largest uh, protest movement globally. And um, in the United States, I would say that largely failed. Um, even though it was rallying cry around a single issue, it, was, um, it became partisan electioneering. And you know, the Bush won a second term, and so the entire movement was dismissed. Then you had the uh, immigration, rights immigration rights movement in 2006, which was successful. And so my question is, um, you know, Occupy famously started around no demands, no single issues to run around. And um, in Tahrir, it was the opposite. You had this very simple demand to get Mubarak to step down. But then from there, it moved on to next demand and next demand. And so my question is, um, as the Occupy movement is, I think, not splintering, but spreading out, um, articulating different areas of activism from ecological crisis, uh, Keystone Pipeline, to the mass incarceration and all these other movements. How, does, um, how could we in the United States keep that kind of energy and passion in, say, more specific uh, movements with their specific demands and issues? And how could we move on rather than letting that movement die or just be a phase that comes and goes? Um. That's a question for uh, I think it's Is it asking Ted? <laughs> <No>. well, <laughs> I mean, I'll just say, like, I, I'm uh, in a more general sense. I mean, I think uh, I grew up between Egypt and uh, and the United States, and I think that uh, both cultures I, I related to, and, and Egypt is a culture with such a rich history, but we don't have traditions of uh, political activism in, in in modern history, really, and having a really strong, engaging uh, sense of of activism. The way that America has this legacy of the civil rights movement and these types of movements. I think the biggest um, thing that, that, that shocks me today is coming from Egypt and see, experiencing what we did over the last couple of years is seeing American, the American public feel that the idea of change is so distant from them. And, and the idea of change as being something that you just do once every four years by going and electing Obama, for example. You know, that's the idea of change that people... And I think that what, with what you're talking about with different movements, with different names, to me, from as an outsider now, not knowing the details of what each movement stands for in America, I think the general uh, problem is in, in going back to the individual. And yes, like what David was saying, explaining to people their rights, but in bringing the idea of change closer to heart, making it accessible. You know, what you're we saying with make the goals, um, you know, make goals, et cetera, when people went down to the Tahrir Square in the beginning, it was not about getting rid of Mubarak at all, actually. It was, that was not even on the list of demands. That was so far from sight, no one would have even imagined that to be a possibility. So that manifested when uh, the millions joined. You know? But what, 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 what brought the people together was people standing up and saying, we've had enough, we're not going to stand for this anymore. And, I think that the goal of, of activism in America today is to find the language to use that message to, to attract millions of Americans. You, know, you can't be fighting to change a country and be so distantly removed from the messaging that, that, that can talk to the mainstream. You know, the mainstream can't look at you and feel that you're putting them down if they're not on your side or you're not, you know, they, they, they have to feel accessible and they have to feel like Ahmed's saying that you're speaking about issues that they, that they face every day. And the reality is most people don't care about the Constitution because it doesn't affect them every day. You know, most people don't care about some of these goals, so you have to bring it to home. You know, that's the biggest thing that we've seen in our country and I think that is, is, is needed in America today as well. And I think it's a very important point to, to really feel like change is actually possible. Um, and I, you know, I did the marches against, you know, I've also grown up between Egypt and the US and I marched against the Iraq war and it was the most, to see all of those people in the street and then to see nothing happen made me very cynical about this kind of thing. And then I went to Egypt and looked at people sitting in a square and thought, Really? People think that sitting in a square is going to change things? I was cynical about it. And then when I saw the dedication and what happened and how people joined and I saw the change and what people were, absolute, what were able to affect and the uncompromising way they said, you know, we're not having kids in this country and we're able to convince people like Ahmed were convincing, sitting in that square and convincing 10 people at a time, you know, 24 hours, and he was convincing them, and, and he was winning people over to, to his side. And I saw this change take place, 
for me personally, that's why I wanted to make this film because I wanted to get it to every college in the US. I wanted to get it to every, because it made me feel alive. It made me feel like change is actually possible. And so if I felt like if I could share Ahmed, if I could share people like that who really believe that change is possible and then do make change happen, if I could share that with every high school student, college student, people you know, across the states and across the world, then I feel like I've shared something important. Yeah. And, and that's why we're doing you know, things like this and trying to get the film out there personally, because I feel like it can make a difference. And, and, and that's why we're also trying to, to release the film in a way where it's, it's owned and shared by people for people. You know, I mean, I think we really, you know, we were at Sundance, we had a great opportunity uh, to be there, and it's, it's a great festival to see such amazing works uh, uh, displayed. But I think that, you know, we, we really felt that our, our film needs to be dis owned and distributed by people, and, and that's why we're choosing to go on a more independent route with the distribution of this film. Yeah. And I think that films and, and, and art in general play a very critical role in, in revolution and in change because I think you need to make it accessible to people. People the need a story. The cinema tahrir screenings were changing people's minds. Yeah. And you mean they came down and it changed? And, and, and the stakes that these people were, are doing, like, you know, people, you know, you guys are talking like America, it's so difficult to change, but you're, you're forgetting that, that you have the rights to change things. I mean, in Egypt, if you even, if you, the, the context of change, like if we were living in a country where if more than four people assembled and were talking about political conversations, they could be arrested. You know, we're talking about a country where state police disappear people. We're talking about a country where the vote percentage is 99% uh, for, for the regime. So you have everything going for you. Everything, you need to realize that. Like you have everything going for you and America is ripe for change. Everywhere we look, we see it in so many ways. America is ripe for change. You have the ability to change it and, and, and realize that you, the odds are on your side. You know, I mean, with what they're saying, 80% per of people disapprove of Congress. Like, what else do you want? You can make the change. I mean, we, we did it. We, we, people in Egypt did it with nothing. No, no resources, 40%, uh, 50% illiteracy. You know, so... Like realize that it's more positive than you think. You know, it might not be moving as fast, but it. We're gonna do one more question. Thank you for that. We're gonna do one more.